Queen Puabi, a Sumerian queen in the city of Ur in Iraq 5,000 years ago, was a highly respected figure, wearing elaborate headdresses and jewelry. But an important part of her appearance was her brightly colored lips, which she painted using a powdered mixture of red rocks and white lead. The tradition of coloring the lips goes back to ancient times, but it was only in the 1880s that the term lipstick was coined. In the civilizations that lived in Mesopotamia, it is known that members of the upper class crushed semi-precious metals and applied them to their lips. The Egyptians made a red lip color by mixing fucus algin, a dark algae, with iodine, bromine, and mannitol. Cleopatra is also thought to have dyed her lips red, using a dye obtained by crushing ants and carmine beetles. According to many historians, the first solid lipstick, compressed in special molds, was produced by the Arab cosmetologist Abu al-Qasim al-Zahrawi. The ancient Greeks had a more complex relationship with lipstick. Predominantly used by sex workers of the time, lipstick became a symbol of their profession. During the Roman Empire, lipstick became genderless, used to indicate social rank, especially among high-ranking male officials. Upper-class women also experimented with lip makeup, so much so that the eccentric Empress Popea Sabina, wife of the infamous Emperor Nero, is said to have had a large staff always on hand to repaint her lips. Mulberry, lemon, rose petals, and wine residue were among the popular homemade ingredients used to color lips. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, around 9 AD, the Arab scientist Abel Casis accidentally invented solid lipstick when, while making a stock for applying perfume that could later be pressed into a mold, he experimented with this method with colors. In medieval Western Europe, religion clashed with cosmetics. Men painted their faces and lips blue to go into battle, but women who wore makeup were considered incarnations of Satan. The cosmetic trend eventually made its way to England. In the 15th century, both the men and women of Edward IV's court wore lipstick. Queen Elizabeth I, a lipstick aficionado, had her own recipe for a customized shade and is said to have invented the lip pencil with one of her close aides by mixing colors with plaster rolling the paste into a pencil, and drying it in the sun. Queen Elizabeth is known to have worn lipstick even on her deathbed, believing it could prevent illness. Queen Victoria imposed an empire-wide ban on lipstick, declaring it dishonest and vulgar. The rebellious women of society began secretly trading makeup recipes and making homemade lipsticks in secret beauty establishments. According to historians, the first commercial lipsticks appeared around 1884. Parisian perfume manufacturers started selling lip cosmetics at this time. In the late 1890s, Sears Roebuck introduced lip and cheek lipsticks. However, these early products are different from the ones we use today. They were often wrapped in silk paper, placed in paper tubes or placed in small containers. Bennett, just two years later, William Kendall's patent for the lipstick tube was an improvement on much earlier designs such as the metal tube lip salves of the 1890s, made by Vinolia Lipsil, or these bourgeois cosmetic pencils, which James discovered dated to 1898. During the First World War, the production of lipstick in Europe was postponed due to rationing. But for Americans, lipstick became a symbol of female strength in the face of danger and the struggle behind the front lines. In 1915, Maurice Levy of Scoville, Scoville Manufacturing Company, developed the familiar lipstick design that rises and falls in a metal tube, and his invention was called the Levy Tube. There is a small lever at the bottom of the tube, as seen in the photo above, which allows the paint to be moved in the tube. In 1923, James Bruce Mason Jr. patented the first rotating tube. Since then, the patent office has granted numerous patents for lipstick. Early examples of lipstick formulas use substances such as crushed insects, butter, beeswax, and olive oil to make pigments. Most of these hardened and became unusable within a few hours and were not considered completely safe for health. In 1927, French chemist Paul Baudercreux invented a formula called Rouge Baiser, considered the first kiss-proof lipstick. But Rouge Baiser was so good at lasting that it was banned because of the possibility of damaging the lips. Another element of the effects of lipstick formulas is their shine. The first lip gloss was produced by Max Factor in the 1930s. In fact, 
Lip gloss, like many other cosmetic products, was originally developed for use on film shoots, but later became widely used in everyday life. In the 1930s, makeup legend Max Factor came up with an ingenious invention combining phrenology, cosmetics, and a withering pseudoscientific analysis of a woman's physical flaws. Meet the Beauty Micrometer, a clockwork orange-style device that analyzes facial ugliness. Years later, in 1950, chemist Helen Bishop invented a new version of the long-lasting lipstick called No Smear Lipstick, which was very commercially successful. By the 1970s, lipstick had become a tool for social rebellion by both sexes in punk rock music. Purple and black were the most popular colors of the punk rock era, opening the door to gender bending without compromising masculinity. David Bowie and glam rockers Lou Reed, Gary Glitter, Kiss, Alice Cooper, and Mick Jagger were among the male stars who used lipstick. In 1973, the Bone Bell Company created a colorless lip gloss with a strong, often fruity scent. The gloss became a big hit among young girls. Lipstick shades changed throughout the 1990s. Initially, they were matte and dark, contrasting with lighter eye and face makeup. In the mid-1990s, browns and other neutral shades were more popular. Lip gloss was mostly used by young girls. Lip liner was also used along with lipstick. 